there is no place for you back there. If you go back there, the enemy's going to have a field day with you. What did he say? He said, you know, seven more worse came with him. You don't want to go there. I promise you, you don't want to go there. But I'm tempted. Well, get out of the state. get out of the frame of mind. You need to go to God. I want what's good for you. Listen, it's easy for me to say, well, you know what, God, if they don't want to escape with me. It's easy for me to say, but no, I can't do that. I suffer with you. I pray with you. I do. I still do. I pray. I pray. I come here and I pray for the pews, for everybody that wants, wants to be here. Everybody wants to hear your word, God. I do it. I do it. I don't care. I willfully do it. It would be much easier for me to say, you know, I just go out there and preach. God, good luck with that. There are a bunch of stubborn people. He'd he probably say, yeah, there's nothing new to that for me. I've been watching this since the beginning. <laughs> but he's always got to have somebody speak on his behalf. He does. He has to. He ha that's the way God ordained it to be. And because he ordained to be, that's, somebody's got to answer the call. Somebody's got to love. And sometimes the pressures come on your heart and you go like, I got a picture back there that a brother gave me. And it's Jesus washing this pastor's feet. And the, <laughs> and the pastor didn't even know that, that Jesus is washing his feet. He just wants to like, he's like this, like wanting to pull his hair out. And I have not gotten to a point yet because I lost all my hair already. But. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes it gets heavy on you because you don't want, you don't want nothing. You don't want, you don't want the people to suffer nothing if you can. Not, not unnecessarily. You already know there's going to be some suffering going on. As a pastor, you know that. You know there's going to be some struggles. You're going to be some challenges. All this stuff you know as a pastor, you know it because you've been through it. Economical. Sickness. All over the spectrum. It's everywhere. So you know these things. And in your heart you go, ah, I know that's there. But the, the one that when people start turning and going away from God, God's not going to keep you from going away from him. I promise you that. That's, that's a choice you make. And you must make the choice to come back. I, there's no, he, no place here in the Bible that, God, that Jesus went around with a rope trying to get people back. Never did. He went, he preached, and he left it up to the believer to believe or to go away. Some of them came to him and just wanted to see the miracles. They wanted to see the fishes and the loaves. They wanted to see him heal this guy, heal that guy, heal that girl. That's all they wanted to see. And then they went away. Not growing, not nothing, not nothing in the faith, just went away. But then again, he went to towns where he wasn't supposed to be in. And then a woman comes in in the middle of the day and gets blessed by Jesus. He waited for her at the well. Oh, hello. Who are you? Give me some water. What are you talking to me? I'm, you're not supposed to talk to me. Give me the water. Her blessing came. Her blessing was, listen, your blessing is waiting on you. Right now. Your blessing is waiting on you at the well to refresh you. To keep you, to bring you into a new life and a new light. He's waiting there. His disciples went away. Oh, let's get something to eat for the master. I'm fine right here. I'm waiting at the well. The well is cool. The well, the well has got plenty to refresh everybody. She got refreshed that day. The disciples came and they didn't even understand what was going on. What was he doing with her? Well, that was none of their business. He pretty much told them. None of your business. What I do is what I do. What God does is none of our business. What we need to do is obey and love God. We don't get that. We want to make it our business. God calls some and others. He calls the same way, but they don't, they don't go. But I want them to come. One of the hardest struggles that I've seen in society, and this is not a new thing, but some of you young women, this is going to be, you're going to think this is a new thing. 
Women always wanted the bad boy image. Because they think they can change the bad boys. And it so happens that the bad boys wind up changing them. And then after a while, they dump them. Because they found somebody, somebody else that newer, fresher, whatever, different. And they'll drop you. Jesus will never drop you. And Jesus, they have the image of a bad boy either. He was a good person. He was a good man in every way. Hey, even, even Pontius Pilate said, I don't see nothing wrong with him. He's done nothing wrong. Why do you guys want to crucify him? Why do you want to kill this man? What's he done? Well, he spoke, you know, he said he was God. Oh, you all saying all kinds of stuff. So why do you want me to kill this one man? See, it was the enemy. It wasn't even them. It was the enemy. I'm going to keep reading. I keep going all over the place. I am so sorry about that. All right. Okay. I'm going to read verse 6 again. This same good news came to you, but it's going out all over the world. It is bringing fruit everywhere by changing lives. Just as it changed your lives. See, we need to understand, did it change our lives? We need to self-examine here. Just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard it, and understood. And under, you, you, know, you don't just come to hear. You need to come to hear and understand. You don't grow if you don't understand. If, if you're going to college, if you're going to high school, wherever you're going, and the, and the professor or the teacher is up there teaching you, and you don't understand what's going on when the, when the exam comes, Hello. So you need to understand what's going on. When God is speaking here, we need to understand. When you're driving down the road and God's speaking to you in your heart, turn off everything you got going on. If you know he's speaking to you in your heart, turn off the radio, turn off everything you got going on, your CD that you like so much, turn it off and start listening to what God is saying. It might only be for a moment. And then meditate on what he said for that moment. It'll grow you. I promise you, it'll grow you. It's grown me tremendously. So, well, you're old, AC, and you've been doing this for years. you got to start somewhere. You're going to wait till, I, till you get old like me, and then you're going to start doing that? You're going to be way behind the eight ball. You can't do that. <sighs> Heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. Listen, listen, this is the reason I say they didn't know Paul, personally. You learn about the good news from Epaphras, our beloved co-worker. He is Christ's faithful servant. This is a good man right here. Not much to say. This, this is about the only time you hear about Epaphras. He's a good man, but he's the one that was preaching the word to them. They heard it from him. They didn't hear from Paul or Timothy or James. They heard it from this no-name guy. They heard the good news that Jesus loves you and Jesus wants to save your soul and that Jesus paid a great price for you from this man right here that is not really all over the Bible like all the other characters. Still, he was a great man of God. He was great enough that he is in the Bible. <laughs> He's great enough. My name's not up there, but I'm not great anyway. <laughs> but he was. He loved the Lord, and he took it, and he took the ball, and he ran with it. He wasn't just, oh, you know what, Paul? That sounds real good to me. I, I believe that. He didn't stop there. He was like that woman at the well. He said, wait a minute. I know these people are close that don't know anything about this right here. I can go over there and tell them. And Paul said, go. See, a lot of the ministry nowadays, when you got somebody that wants to go minister, they get jealous. Oh, he might start something new. Listen, you better get out of the way because if God's anointed that person to go speak in his behalf, you can't stop it anyways. You better support that individual instead of, of trying to hold him back. If you don't want to go talk about Jesus to somebody, if you tell me, hey, man, I, I, God wants me to go to wherever to talk about the Lord. 
I'm going to bless you in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to send you in the name of Jesus Christ. Just make sure you're doing it in the Lord. That's all I ask of you. Make sure you watch yourself in Christ like this guy did right here. Paul called him a faithful worker. Our beloved co-worker. He is Christ's faithful servant. He was not doing it for his own self gain. Let's be clear. It says he is Christ's faithful servant and he is helping us on your behalf. In other words, you guys are supposed to be helping us, but he is. It's okay. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. Even when you love other people, folks, you don't love them out of your own goodness. It's the Spirit of the Lord that's helping you love other people. Just to be clear, I love you guys with all my heart, but it's not really me. It's the Holy Spirit that guides me into loving you guys. Because sometimes the old guy, he wants to go, no. No. Not that much, no. That's the old guy. But I don't listen to the old guy anymore. See, there's a new guy. There's a new guy that says, no, you pray. No, no. You love. No, you persevere. Regardless of what you think in the old head, the new man must prevail. You must, we all must prevail. Is it easy? No. I'll attest to you. Pride is an amazing thing. Pride took down Adam, Eve, and the whole generation that came after them. Pride. Pride. It's an amazing thing. It's still to this day, it's still try, even God's people, even the most holy of man to this day, there's a little bit of pride in there that they need to be rid of. I'm here. I need help. I need, I need prayer because sometimes it tries to creep up. Not that I got anything to be proud about, but sometimes it's like, yeah, look how well they did today. You know what? You got to be careful with that because that's pride. It's just trying to rear his ugly head just a little bit so you start putting confidence in it instead of in God. Right. And then you, they're doing well. I don't need to, I need to pray that much anymore. Be careful. Be careful. You start doing the same thing with your children. All of a sudden you see them doing good and you go, you slack off. You take, the, you take your foot off the gas. Well, they're doing well. I don't want to be too overbearing with, with the Christ thing. You can never be overbearing enough with the Christ thing. How do you know, AC? Well, I raised three kids. And they were probably sick and tired of hearing me talk about the Lord. At some point, I'm sure they were. But just like a good father or a good mother, that spoon come out full of food and you just wipe that face off and put it right back in their mouth. Because you know what was good for them. And you just do it again, and it's like, uh, you wipe it out, and you put it right back in there again until they get it all down. And that's, what, that's the way we're supposed to do with Christ, with our children. You start talking to them when they're like that, like that, and like this right here. That's when you start talking to them. That's when I started talking to them. She can tell you. We, we lived in Woodstock, and we used to drive all the way up here to see some friends, and we talked about the Lord all the way up here. And then she used to fall asleep on the way back. <laughs> I don't blame her. We, we did a lot of stuff. Right? But she can tell you, we used to talk about the Lord all the time on the way up here. Don't give up on your children. Don't just think the world is going to be okay. I got them. Listen, Christian schools are good. I have my, my two oldest daughters in Christian school. It's good. There's nothing wrong with it. I, I support it 100%. Okay? But don't think everything is about that. What you show them at the house is what they really believe. It's what they know because mom and dad did it this, this way, and that's the way it is. That's right. That's wrong. That's what they do. That's how they learn. They, they might learn a little bit from the teachers, but they're going to learn a lot more because they, you are the people they trust. That's right. You've been bringing them up before they knew a teacher, and teachers change from year to year. But you there, you there always. So they, who do you think they trust? You. So you need to start looking at these things and say, wait a minute. What kind of an example am I setting for her, for him? 
for them. You need to start doing that. You want good results, you need to start doing good things. You want careless results, live carelessly. You want bad results, live badly. Whatever, whatever, whatever you sow, you reap. That's the way it is. You know, people don't like hearing that, but I got to warn some of these young parents because, in the, in the young parents to be, because I know that this is the way life is. I've seen it too many times, and it's heart crushing. And all of a sudden, they're adults, and you don't understand why it happened. I made no bones about with my kids. Well. So-and-so's mom and dad, they're more like their friends. I tell them real quick, I am not your friend. Let's get this clear. I am your dad. I'm not going to treat you like your friend. You, you know, your friends will leave you, and next thing you know, and you can ask them now, they're, they're friends that they used to know a long time ago, they no longer know, right? I'm still here. I will always be here until God takes me. I will always be here as their dad, not as their friend. I love them. I like to hang around with them. But I know it's more fun to hang around with somebody their age. I understand that. Not stupid. I'm not their friend. I am their dad. You need to understand that. You are, God gave you these children for you to raise correctly. You're not their friend. They're your children. Instruct the child in the way he should go. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, verse 9 says, so we have not stopped praying for you. So Paul heard about this good report that came from Epaphras to them. And he says, so we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. You know, they didn't even heard about them. And this is how Paul prayed. This is, this is important. This is how Paul prayed for them. We ask God, this is how, and, and how do, we, do we pray like this for other people? And we should. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Listen, that's how you pray for people. You don't pray for people, I hope they get better. I hope they do this. I hope they do that. Don't, don't that, that's wasted prayer. If they don't understand God, we have got to give you complete knowledge of His will. Not your will, His will. So this is what they, this is how Paul prayed for that church that he didn't even know in a personal basis. He said, I pray God give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom. How are you going to get spiritual wisdom unless you're hearing the word of God, unless you're reading the word of God, unless you're praying with communing with God? You are not going to get spiritual wisdom. If you, if you watch CNN or Fox News all day long, I promise you, you are not getting spiritual wisdom. You might be getting worldly wisdom, but not spiritual. And the world comes to an end and then, whoops, I was supposed to get spiritual wisdom? Yeah, yeah you're, you're accountable for that. Are you following the instruction book that I gave you? I signed it with my own blood. Are you following it? I know I'm hard. I love being hard. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of His will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. With all you're getting, get what? Understanding. We need to understand what He's talking about all the time. And let me tell you, I don't care, and I know that I know people like Berto and Kim that have been here since the beginning and Rachel and all that. They know it. They hear me say this. If you don't get in here and start reading and start practicing, you are not going to get any kind of understanding. You'll get partial. And then the enemy, guess what? He's wiser than you are. Don't think of yourself highly. So he knows what part you're strong in, and he also knows what part you're not. And he'll come at you the way that you're not. Look at all the generals. Look at all the armies. Look at all the wars that have been fought through the ages. How do they overcome? They know the weakness and they know how to get around that weakness. Even in the animal kingdom, they separate the strong from the weak. And they devour the weak. If you're weak in any part, 
That's the reason the new man must be put on. That's the reason your faith has got to become a radical faith. If you have any part in you that is weak, that's where the enemy is going to come in and test you. And let me tell you how I've seen it. I've seen it done. And I've seen it done. Sadly, I've seen it done in some people that are, well, as I know them, they're very good people. But they walked away from God. They're still good people. And they're still talking about Jesus like, and tears come to their eyes. Emotions just rise to the top. But they are not living the life. And they know they're not living the life. The fruit is not there to bear them witness. And then the enemy comes in and sweeps from that, from that backstage. He just comes in and takes everything they got. And then when they get to the bottom, they got nothing. It's like, oh, Jesus, help me. Where have you been? Yeah, I'll come and help you. He did it time and time and time and again. But what has been taken from you has been taken from you. Now you're going to have to start all over again. Is that what you want? I think we need to be wiser than that. If I know something is causing me harm, I'm going to go on the limb here that I got no smokers, but if I do, forgive me. If you know that smoking cigarettes is bad for you and, it, and you're coughing in the morning when you first get up, and you're craving that cigarette more than you're craving a glass of water, okay? And the Lord says, you need to put that down. If you don't put it down, and all of a sudden you develop emphysema, do not blame God. Do not blame God. Do not say, why did God let this happen? God didn't let it happen. You did. You live a frivolous life outside of the Word of God, doing whatever you want, and then it's so easy to come back and blame God. Why did God let this happen? Well, I got news for you, people. God didn't let it happen. It's the way of life that it happened. And it really, and it really, and this is where I go, Lord, why did they do this? It really hurts me when I see people that live their life any way they want to, doing anything they want to, and then some catastrophe happens and they go, why did this happen to me? Well, you never acknowledged the Lord. You never looked up to God. You were just living life to your pleasures. And all of a sudden, when things don't fall in line, you look up to the sky. Why did you let this happen in, in an accusative way of God, accusing God, never taking responsibility, never saying, wow, that was wrong. Look what happened. I am so sorry, God. Help me out. No, they go, why did you let this happen? It gets me. It burns me. It's like, it's not his fault. You're living a frivolous life. You're living a life full of your self-content, and you want to do nothing but enjoy yourself. And then don't, don't, you don't ever think about God. You never look up to the sky and thank Him for all the heavens. And then when some catastrophe happens, you blame Him for it. Where were you when He made the sky? Where were you when He set the earth in place? Where were you when He opened the fountains of water and created, the, and created all the rivers and all the streams and all the earth? Where were you? Where were you when He... Created the fowls of the air. Where were you? And you're going to blame God? Wake up, people. This is radical faith I'm talking about here. We're going to have to step over the boundary of being a little church quiet, like a little, little church mouse. I'm tired of the church mouse stuff. I want people to start living in this faith that it was given to us through Jesus. He didn't die so we can be a church mouse. He died for a, a thriving church. One that would, listen, if you be ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you before the Father. Be very careful. We're talking about eternal things here. Well, I'm not talking about this every day, go get a hamburger kind of thing here. I'm talking about eternal things. If you be ashamed of him, he said he'd be ashamed of you before the Father. You better be very, very careful how you threat with that one. I'm not, well, obviously. No, I, I'm not going to be quiet about this either, Carl. God is demanding his justice back in the church. He wants his church to go back to 
He's, what did he say in Revelation? Do we, not, do we not have it written for us to understand? You left your first love. Oh, God help us. I hope we're Philadelphia. I hope we're Philadelphia. If you leave your first love, people, he says, you know, the candle, he says, it's almost out. What are you going to do with that? You better start fanning the flames. You better start doing something. You better start thinking when you leave here today, you better start thinking, God, what do I do? How do I get back in the right track with you? I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss it. If you come in the middle of the night, see, we worried about tomorrow. Let me tell you something. He can come tonight. Just because he hasn't, that doesn't mean he won't. The same Jesus that promised that he will come back is coming back. And no man knows the place, the hour, or the time. Nobody knows. He does. We don't. Even when Jesus, when you hear these people saying, oh, Jesus, no, 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 no. Nobody knows the time. You can look at certain things and all that, and people try to play on that real big, and nothing happened. But when he decides, it's over. Even Jesus, when he was walking as a man on the earth, he didn't even know. He's not for me to know. The Father decides that. But now Jesus knows, because he, he is the Father. He is with the Father. He is the all three in one. We need to understand. We need to be careful. This is not something that is threat lightly. Oh, we're just going to go to dinner after we have church. We heard that the restaurant's open and Longhorns are serving. Let's go. God is serving you a much better meal right here, right now. You better take it to heart. Because that meal will go out through the drought a couple hours after you eat it. This one can sustain you forever. You need to understand these things. These things are real. What, I'm, what we're reading here, and I'm with you. I'm, I'm in this bunch. What we're reading here, it can sustain us for life. If we obey it, or we can choose to ignore it. Verse 9. I'm almost done. Okay, verse 10. Okay, so after you do verse 9... This says, we, after, after he prayed for them to have complete knowledge of his will and give you spiritual wisdom and understanding, then verse 10 says, then, then, not until then, but then, the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. After you have spiritual wisdom, understanding, and complete knowledge, then the way you live will please the Lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. Every kind. Not just one kind, every kind. What does he mean by that, AC? You're going to be able to help people. You're going to be able to talk softly when you need to talk softly. You're going to be able to have mercy when you have mercy. And then you're going to be able to be hard when you need to be hard. You're going to be able to stand your own ground. You know there's such a thing as that? Jesus stood his own ground. Paul stood his own ground. We must stand our own ground. It's time. Sometimes you got to be. And I knew I came today. I said, boy, Lord, I, help me here. Stand the ground. Give them the word. Stand the ground. Give them the word. Stand the ground. What they do with it is not your, it's not your business. You give the word. You stand your ground. And you let them do what they're going to do with it. See, I think about Jesus, how many times have I gathered you like a brood gathers a hand? You know, sometimes I get like that. And God says, he couldn't hold him either. See, God corrects me too. He said he couldn't hold him either. He wanted to, but he couldn't hold him. They did their own thing anyways. Hey, see, you just do what I tell you to do. Give it out. It's up to them to receive it or do something with it. And if they don't, that's up to them. That's not on you. See, the problem is, if I don't tell you these things, then it is on me. I know God a little bit too well to let that happen. I don't want to be responsible for that. Well, I should have told him this. No. 
Tell them what you're supposed to tell them. Not what they want to hear. Tell them what they need to hear. Sometimes it's two different things. I got a daughter that likes, likes she told me, she said, well, Dad, when I go to church, I want to I want to be made feel good. Well, sorry, babe. That's not what church is for. You want to feel good, you need to go to the doctor. I don't know. I don't know what to tell them. I love them. They're my kids. Okay, so then, okay, verse 10 said, then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, all the time while you're producing this good fruit, you will grow and learn to know God better and better. It never stops. You continue. I'm continuing to grow in the Lord. I, I don't know everything. I'm far from it. <laughs> I'm still learning. As I walk with God, I learn more and more and more and more. And that's the way it's going to be for all of us. That desire to know the Lord. If you desire to know God, you're going to be learning about God because He will teach you. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all His glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience. Boy, that's what I need right now. All the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with Joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. May you be filled with joy. Not happiness, joy. Two different things. Being happy and being joyful, two different spectrums. Okay? You need to be filled with joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Happiness does not make you strong. It flees like this right here. Overnight it can flee. But joy... See, you can, the reason David was so powerful is because he understood the joy of the Lord. And he knew his power in him. Though he ran from his own son, though he ran from the king Saul, though he ran from all the enemies at times, he had a lot going on, like Rachel said. He had a lot going on. David was always going. Busy little guy. He really was. But he understood the joy of the Lord. And he said, look, I remember when God delivered me from the lion and the bear. See, he had joy in that. He said, "Woo, (laughs) you ain't going to stop me. When I'm coming, you ain't going to stop me. Philistines, good luck. You ain't stopping me. I'll come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. You cannot stop who I am. See, right now, we, 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 we back off. The enemy comes in and growls out a little bit. This is COVID-19. I'm coming to get you. And we all back off. Whoa. You better not. You better come to that giant in the name of the Lord. And you better stand your ground like David did. You know, my sister, when she told me that, the first thing that flew to my mind is like, tried to fly in my head. That could be you. I said, no, I can't. Because God made me a different promise. And if I don't stand, if I don't abide in the promises that he made me, then, yeah, the enemy can come and get me. My fault. But if I abide, Psalm 91, I heard it so many times now. If I abide in the secret place of the Most High, the enemy cannot come nigh my place. Not because of me, because that's what the Word says. And you either believe what the Word says, or you can believe Dr. Fauci. And Dr. Burke and all the other doctors out there. You can believe one of the two. As for me and my house... We'll believe the word of the, the, word of the Lord. Amen. Nothing else. Oh, that's radical. Absolutely. I want you to be radical. I'm not sick, am I? I'm all over Atlanta. Oh, you might be spreading it, AC. I'm not spreading nothing because it cannot come not my place. It cannot come near me. Do you understand that? I want you all to get that clear. It cannot come near me. I'm abiding on the secret place of the Most High. It cannot. I'm abiding there night and day and day and night. So it cannot come near me. I can't spread it to you if it cannot come near me. It cannot attach itself to me because it's rejected before it even gets there. It's almost like I walk around with a halo around me. I hope you all are too. The enemy tries. Oh, I'll get you now. 
you downtown Buckhead, so what? So what? Well, them two gay guys, you don't know where they've been. So what? I come in the name of the Lord. I don't come in my own. I come well equipped. I got the sword. I got the shield. I got the helmet. I got the breastplate. Hallelujah. I'm shod. I come in the name of the Lord. Man, I, 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 don't, I don't come bashful. You want to hear it, here it comes. See, David understood that. David knew because God made him a promise. Look, 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 God has made us all these promises and we go like, but really? David, when God promised him that he'd have a lineage of kings that would always sit on the throne, David did not doubt one time that that would happen. And guess what? It happened. All the way down. Until there were no more kings, all the way down it happened for David because he had a radical faith. His wife tried to say, David, you're making a fool out of yourself. Look at what you're doing. He says, hey, what the Lord tells me to do, that's what I'm going to do. You think it's stupid? You think it's foolish? You think whatever you think? You know, she never had no children with David after that. That was it. Guess what? She went dry. David went on fertile. You got to remember all these things. When God makes you a promise, people, don't back away from the promises. Learn the promises. They're already there. Get a hold of the promises. Everybody wants a gift. I want the gift of tongues. I want the gift of prophecy. I want this gift, and I want that gift. Let me tell you, the gifts are all here, but give me his promises first. I'd rather have the promises than everything else. I'd rather have the gift giver than the gifts. Do you want the bag that Santa Claus brings, or do you want Santa Claus? That's, right. That's the problem. That's the problem. We think he's Santa Claus. No, he's not Santa Claus. He's God. And he's made some real promises in here that we need to keep, and we need to understand it, and we need to have spiritual wisdom, and we need to work him in our lives. Amen. We have to do this, people. I don't even know where I'm at. I think I'm done. 11. Okay, endurance and joy. Always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in his inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. Are we in the light? For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. We used to sing a song like that. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Purchase our freedom. Not with money. Not with tangible things. He purchased our freedom with his blood. Should we not, should we not honor that? Think about it. When the enemy comes to tempt you, I want you to take a moment and just think about that. Just take a split second and just think, should I not honor the one who gave his blood for me? Who else, who else does anybody know in here know a personal person that, uh, that, that has shed his blood for you, just for you, to save you? We talk about our soldiers. Yeah, they, they gave our, for the country, but they did it for the country. And they did it because they were ordered. Jesus willingly put his life down. Willingly put his life down for us. Should we not honor that? Should we not take a little bit of time to think? I mean, we just had communion this morning. Should we not, should we just take it so lightly that it's like, oh, well, yeah, that happened 2,020 years ago. You know, he was a good man. You better not think of him like that. You're going to be awful disappointed because the enemy, that's what the enemy wants. He wants to lullaby you into thinking this is nothing. It's an emotional trip. Jesus, you know, yeah, he was a good man, but he's gone to be with the Father. You, have, you can do your own thing now. He comes to give you life and that more abundantly. That's what, he, that's what he comes to give me. Listen, don't believe everything you hear, even from me. No. You need to read. You need to pray. 
you need to dig. You need to do your homework. You know, those who are successful in, in, in the business world, they put a lot of effort. I'm serious. I put a lot of effort into my business. When, I got, when my business was growing, I put a lot of effort into it, a lot of effort. I work seven days a week. I go to church with my kids. After church, I drive my kids home, and I go look at more work. And I, I, I mean, I worked. I kept on, kept on, kept on, kept on until my business grew. Now I'm in the position that I don't have to do that anymore. But it took work, a lot of work. And it paid off, right? Same thing in the Scriptures. Same thing, even more so in the Scriptures. The more you put into this right here, the more of the Spirit of the Lord that you want to take upon yourself, the more things are going to start clicking for you. And I tell you this to young people because it's important when you're young to get this thing inside of you. I need to get this thing clicking. I need to get this something I'm missing here. God will show you. It's different for everybody. But I tell you this, and, 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 and some of you older ones, you're not out of the woods yet. You know, I mean, you, you can still perform for God. There's no time to stop. Like I said, Enoch kept walking until there was no more Enoch. But we need to start digging into the Word of God more and more and more. If you want to have radical faith, you're not just going to get it because you want it. You're going to get it because you understand it. You're going to get it because spiritual wisdom comes upon you. You're going to get it because you understand the Word of God, because you love God, because you want, to, you want to please God. That's how you get these things. You don't just get them flippantly. It just doesn't happen that way. It takes effort. It takes perseverance. A business does not grow in one day. It takes time, right? I know, I know B's doing that. And it's an effort. It's a strong effort to keep on, you know, sometimes you want to just like, ah, uh, I'm tired of this. But something inside of you tells you, no, you got to keep on going. See, I, I had that too, and I, I had to keep on going. And then next thing you know, you get to the side and you forgot. Really, I'm telling you, I'm telling you from my own experience. All of a sudden, you forgot how hard you had to work back then to get it to where you're at now. Because it's, it's back there. It's back there. And you're looking and you're going like, wow, God did a, miracle th a miraculous thing here for me. And, and, it, and it does happen that way. But it's not always easy. Digging the Word of God is not always easy. You're going to get tired. You're going to get sleepy. You're going to get this. You're gonna... you, you get what you put into it, like anything else. Any relationship, if I only saw my wife once a year, that's the kind of relationship we'll have, once a year. But since we spend time all, all the time together we can, we talk about the Lord all we can. So guess what? We're both growing in the Lord. We're both still growing in the Lord. She said things sometimes, and I go, wow, that's pretty good. Sometimes she gets like a little girl. She'll read something in the scripture, and she gets so excited. She'll come over, and she'll say, look, look, I just saw this. Maybe I'm being crazy. She said, but does it make sense to you? <laughs> I mean, it's like you find another nugget, you know, you know, and, and it was like, yeah, I really, that, that's really good, you know. And, and she encourages me, and I try likewise to encourage her. You know, she encourages me a lot more than I encourage her. I will tell you that. But I take all the encouragement I can get. So, <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm not going to fault her for it. But that's the way we're supposed to work. Our relationship is supposed to work like that. Our relationship with God is supposed to work like that. He'll give you these nuggets for you to be encouraged, for you to keep drawing closer to him and closer to him. Come on, praise team. Come on. Question. Do we really want radical faith in spite of what, other, what others will say? Because that's where the pride comes in. Do you want radical faith, the faith that Paul had? See, we want to see the miracles that Paul did, but we don't want to have to Oh, no, I don't want to be like Paul. That's a little bit over the edge right there. Well, yeah, people are going to talk bad about you, ain't you? You're going to say, yeah, man, that guy's way over the edge. I've been accused of that already. It's okay. Let me tell you, it's not that bad. It don't hurt me nothing. What people think is never going to hurt you. What, sticks and stones, that old saying, you know, hurt your bone? 
So what people think is not going to hurt you. What can hurt you is not being obedient to God. That can hurt you. That can hurt you. That can hurt you bad. So if you want radical faith, ask the Lord. If you want to come up and pray because whatever you need, that's fine. But if you want radical, come up and pray and ask the Lord. I don't, we don't need to lay hands on you or, or nothing like that. You can just come and ask the Lord. You want, you want your faith to be stronger. You want to be able to walk in a, in a deeper walk with God. Come and ask the Lord. He's here to extend his hand to you like he did with Peter. He's here. But it's up to you to grab his hand. You can just sit there and go, oh, well, okay, maybe it'll happen. Or you can grab the hand of the Lord and say, I, I, I need that, Father. It's up to you. Ball's in your court. 